Yeah, so then welcome to <coughs> lecture number 10. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, I have a cold. I hope I, hope I will manage um, this one and a half hour. Maybe I'm talking a little bit less loud. Um, <coughs> so today we are talking about um, CUDA, which is now pretty common um, stuff in a sense. You could see this in a little bit in, a, in the connection to the last lecture, where we talked about ZIMD computation on, on CPUs, which on, on Intel type and x86 um, CPUs, which, is, which has been around for, since the 1990s. Yeah, and which, in a sense, never took really off. And maybe you got last time a little bit the impression why this is the case. So it didn't look very smooth. And when, when you get through, you actually don't see that much benefit unless you uh, spend a lot of work into it, yeah? um, probably. So we did not manage really to get it faster last time um, than without than without SIMD. So CUDA is a little bit the idea how how things work um, better. But if we talk about CUDA, it is important that this is linked to a certain company, of course, which is now apparently the, the richest or the most, what is it, not, not the richest, but the most expensive company in the world. So last week or so, they had to split up their, you know, acts and their stocks so that you can actually still buy them, yeah? Because they, they have <laughs> inflation in, in cost. And the, um, of the, of, of their, um, Shares, yeah, their, their shares. So why are those so important? This, also, this has, of course, to do with artificial intelligence. Yeah, and the, and um, NVIDIA, the company NVIDIA is, of course, the company that is selling the machines that are basically doing the stuff. Yeah, so there's, on one hand, there's, of course, the algorithms. The algorithms... Many people who learned computer science back, 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 back then have the impression there's not that much of change. A little bit change there is. Yeah? So there are a few new ideas, but in principle, um, this artificial intelligence stuff with neural networks, yeah? so in principle, this was all done, done deal 30 years ago. Yeah? So it's the big difference so the big difference is the amount of data that you have nowadays and that you can feed in and the machines that you have. And, and this is also very, very important, the tools for the programmers. Yeah? So the um, inter interesting co concept behind NVIDIA, um, even before there was anything to do with machine learning, is that they provide the machine together with easily usable tools, software tools. Yeah? So in these software tools, especially in, in artificial intelligence, yeah, so what is really the driver behind this, or one of the drivers behind this, is that you have this very simple programming languages like PyTorch and what is the other one? Um, TensorFlow, yeah, so these, these two things. So you don't need to understand anything like, like learning. Yeah, you understand, need to understand a little bit of it, but not, not really that deep. And then you can get started. You have these things. You have, a, um, you have your GPU, and you can do artificial intelligence. Yeah, great. So th this is now we have, we have the problem that the so artificial intelligence goes up and you don't, the idea is you don't need a lot of natural intelligence. <laughs> so the other one goes down and we as teachers 
have to convince you, the students, that it's still uh, worthwhile to actually learn things, because you can have the idea that, that that's no longer important. Uh, but trust me, it is. Yeah? Okay, I have to say this. Okay. So, okay, we learn about um, GPUs. Uh, no, we learn about, yeah, in particular, CUDA <coughs> and how to work with this. And the idea, in principle, is a little bit similar. Um, I mean, is a, is a SIMD um, architecture. So in, in, in principle, it should be similar to how we uh, did the um, programming with EVX. Yeah? And before there was CUDA, and also still with, with, other, with other vendors, probably, you had to program your GPUs in a similar way. And you said this is not, this is not necessarily easy. So there is, of course, hardware difference um, between these things. And um, so if you look at the CPU, and of course this is a little bit outdated, but we also work with an outdated computer. So our computer here, is the, the Phoenix is eight years old. Yeah. Um, so we have this kind of, of processor, Intel Xeon A5, that comes with 10 cores, and it uses a hyper-threading, so you can do 20 threads at one time. So and the CPU, so these pictures come from NVIDIA, where they compare their machines to the usual machines. So here you have, um, you have big cores, yeah, so this is especially in the case of the X86 um, architecture, which some people think is probably now going to die out pretty soon, yeah, because there are other things. So, I mean, what is the problem behind this processor? It was more or less one of the first. So it started with 16-bits, uh, go to 32-bits, one um, one core, no cache, yeah, um, no pipelining or anything, no hyper-spreading, blah, blah, blah. And um, they suffer from that whatever they invented on the way from, the, from 1980 yeah, to now, they added to the processor. So it's all still in. Yeah? So it's just growing, 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 like... I don't know, like a tree, which becomes unmovable. Yeah? So it's, it's big, it can do a lot of stuff, but whatever has been added will be there forever. Yeah? So, and this is very unflexible. Yeah? And this is also the reason why when you, when you throw everything out and you start something new with um, this... Um, an ARM architecture, M1, and so on, then, oh, it's this fast, yeah? Um, because they have thrown stuff overboard. It is not necessarily, that, that there's not, no longer um, timely, say, yeah? So, I mean, part of this is also the reason why, um, why GPUs can do uh, some things different. But the big difference here, is yeah you have you have this big cores you have a big control unit and you have local caches local caches which may either be linked to one core or yeah so for example l1 cache and you have l3 cache so and then this is this is how your your cpu looks like and the difference to the to the gpu is they have um pretty a pretty small control structure, and they have pretty small caches linked to one um, to, lo to one core, so to speak. Yeah, and then they have this this large vector units of usually thirty two things, thirty two um, threads that have to be processed at the same time, and they have lots of lots of them. Yeah, so all of them can do calculations. 
but they all have to do the same calculation at the same time. It's the SIMPI version. So now they have um, about the cache. So they have registers. Um, originally, they didn't have a lot of cache. Nowadays, they also have cache. Um, but this, this cache is something is, is shared with the concept of shared memory. So um, the concept that we have here, I don't know whether we have this on the next slide, yeah? So the concept that we have here is that each thread is supposed to process one entry. Yeah, so you're, you're not doing a loop over data, but you do, um, so you attach, or if you think in loops, because you've grown up with this kind of thinking, yeah, so you have to change your thinking, you distribute, you have, think you have a pool of stuff that you want to do, yeah, same operation that you would usually put into a loop, and now you distribute it, all of this to a different threads. To different threads, and you try to avoid loops altogether. So one one thread pro, uh, processes one entry, and this is here possible um, because these these um, these threads can change between what they are doing without um, overhead. So if you come from the old days, like me. And we had um, multi-threading, yeah. So where we had uh, in our computers, which we still have, and I mean we have these these devices still in front of us. So probably in your in your phone you have four to eight to what uh, sixteen cores working at the same time, but you have much more threads, yeah. So these kind of threads that run on the big computers. When you um, when you switch from one of the of these threads to another thread doing another doing other work, you have to save the registers that are currently in work with the thread. You have to put them on the on the stack somewhere. Yeah? So you have to save them because you're you're interrupting your program. Yeah, you're to do something else. Um, now you have your registers in the thread um, that have to be saved because you have to pick up at the same position where you where you're currently at. So you have to read out all re your registers and put it somewhere in memory. Read this for the other thread that you want to continue. Put this in into your registers. Do the other thing and do. The, um, the copying um, again. Yeah? So this is something that um, the, the, NVIDIA, um, the NVIDIA guys thought a lot about and they, their GPUs are just able to switch between different registers so, such that switching from one thread to another thread comes at no cost. Yeah? So this is very important because um, on, on the CPU, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do this to, to try to <laughs> have one thread doing one thing, yeah, because you want to switch between threads um, very rarely, not often, because it's expensive to switch between threads. Yeah? But here it became um, for free to switch between threads, and so the idea now is you give everything to, a, to its own thread, you have millions, potentially, of threads that are all processed um, in arbitrary order. So, and now they are also organized in a, in a way. Um, they have... <clears throat> they have a... a <laughs> so this is... How your program is being organized. You put your program into a grid which can be one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional. You have to think, this, is, this comes from a um, from graphics card, so usually they produce images, which are two-dimensional grids, and you could put 
your image on a grid and then inside this image you have then blocks and inside this blocks you have pixels and each pixel is processed by um, one thread at a time. So this is basically the idea. Yeah? So all of this originally came um, from graphics processing and then something like 15 years ago suddenly there were this um, graphics card without you know a monitor plug yeah so this was the DC1 1060 was the first of them yeah where you could plug this in and you could not uh, you did not get a picture out and back then it was not necessarily easy to read memory in the graphics card because the graphic card was only you know you throw things out and um, it never came back. Now we have to think about this this coming back. Um, yeah, so now because the graphics card is not the main is not the main um, computer. Now you have to think uh, of this like this. There is the host which is the machine that is in, in front of you and is run with the CPU and the operating system. And then there is the device. And originally, you would just send the image data to the device and the device would just um, put this to the monitor. Right? So this, this was the idea. And then, there's the pos then there came the possibility to do this both ways so that you read it back from the device and, and look at it in in your, <clears throat> um, in your computer. So, now we have the host, that is your computer, the device is the graphics card, and we have something that we call kernels, and the kernels is the program that we send to um, the device, and this will now distribute the same program um, on as many threads as you wish. Yeah? And one thing that still um, comes from, from that is probably because I was, I'm an old guy coming from the old um, time um, because a kernel is originally supposed to put images on your screen your operating system will usually put a limit on how, how long a kernel is allowed to run. And this is pretty short, usually. Yeah? So you cannot um, run very long programs in this way. You will usually run very, very short um, programs. But again, so this, is, this comes from the time when a graphics card was just a graphics card, and now uh, things will probably change a little bit. Okay, so how does this work um, with, with this CUDA? So CUDA, CUDA is a C-like um, programming language that is supposed to simplify the programming on NVIDIA GPUs. Unfortunately, only on NVIDIA GPUs. Yeah? So you, you have seen how you can do SIMD on the, on the CPU with this intrinsic function. So if you want to add two vectors, we have to write add vector with blah, 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 blah. And, and you start thinking, so suppose I have an equation. How do I put this equation in, uh, into my computer? And you have to imagine, so um, back 20 years ago, and there were already graphics cards who would already do something like this, and you wanted, yeah, they were already faster than the CPU. Um, programming them was really pain, yeah, because you had to use such kind of functions. Now, the guys from NVIDIA, of course, so th this, this is the big innovation. Maybe maybe the bigger innovation than having fast graphics cards because the others also have fast, maybe faster, I don't know. But they could not be so easily programmed. 
as, as this. So the idea is um, to really make it feel like you're programming in C. Not necessarily C++, but programming like in C. Okay, so you will define your function um, that, that will then become the kernel in, in this way here with this keyword global and void add. So then you present them, so, so I mean, the idea is you add um, two vectors. So you will present pointers to these vectors, A and B, and the pointer to the vector that you want to return. So then in this function, so the, this function just looks like usual arithmetic. Yeah? So you get an index to the array and you index the other arrays and you sum, you sum them up. Now you see what is, what is the index here. Remember each element in this array is processed in, 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 an own, in, in, in its own thread. So we are not looping over the vector, yeah? But what we do instead is we have to identify, so we will distribute this to threads, and then we have to identify inside the thread which thread we are. And this can be done um, with, um, yeah, in this case with the block index, or also with the thread index, so we'll come to this in, in a few minutes. Here we identify, so there the are different, um, different ways to do this, but what we the point is we have to identify who we are, which is our job. Yeah? So we'll get an ID, then we do this work, and then this kernel is done. So, now, but the thing is, this kernel, unlike in AVX, <coughs> this kernel cannot access the memory of your, of your computer. I think this is, this is one difference that they have with the M1 chip in, in Apple. So they have a common memory space um, for GPU and, and uh, CPU, yeah? So, but we are stuck with our um, architecture that we have inherited. <clears throat> so we have a main memory in our host system, and then we have in our graphics card, um, we have the memory of the graphic card. Yeah? And they are not connected. So the only way they are connected, they have a PCI bus. So this is the thing, you know, this is the thing where you put it in, usually. And you have to put everything through this through this bus. So um, what you have to do is you have to have your data twice. So you have your data in your, mach in your um, machine, in the host, and you have your data in the device. And if you want to access it, you have to copy it. So first thing you have to do is you copy it from your host, so you generate it on the host, you can also generate it on the device, then you don't need to copy, but say you generate it on the, on the host, because you read it from a file, for example, then you have to use a copy function, CUDA mem copy, and copy it um, from, from the device, uh, sorry, from the host to the device, and the, the order of the command here is that you write here the destination first and the source second. Yeah? So destination source, and then the amount of memory that you want to copy. And this is, you know, this is, this is C style. It's not like C++ style. Yeah? It's, you, you, tell, you tell it how much memory comes. Yeah? So um, we want to copy n, n integers. So then we tell them we copy n times the size of one integer. This is the amount, the amount of memory that is copied from here to there. 
Yeah? And then we specify that we want to copy from the host to the device. So then we call this, um, this function like this. So this is something, um, and this, this, this is um, ROM. I try to get rid of these mistakes, but I did not. So, okay, so there is this, there are these chevrons here, which we'll discuss in a minute. So they are indicating how many threads we are using. And then we call this function with the pointers on the device. Yeah? So this is a function, it's a global function that runs on the device and it has only access to the memory of the device. So it can only use the pointers in the device, not the pointers in the host. Yeah, there, there's no access to this. Okay, so then it does the addition. So, okay, this is how it works. We have the host, we send data over the PCI bus into the RAM, then we do the calculation here, and then we copy it back. So again, with copying it back, is we have the destination first, and then the source, where the destination is now the host, and the source is the device we have this, the amount of bytes, the, the, the number of bytes that we want to send. And here we indicate now that we are doing the copying in the other way, namely from the device to the host. Okay? So, any questions to this? No, very simple. So before we do copying, we have to do we have to allocate memory, yeah? So the memory has to exist before we, do it, before we copy anything. So um, that means in general, we have to have these arrays on the host and we have to have these arrays on the device. And how we allocate memory on the host is something that we discussed already. Um, so this is, um, now, it's not the new function, yeah, so, but it's, 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 plain, um, it's plain C. So it does not, so you, you, allocate, you allocate memory and then, then you um, do a um, um, casting such that the programming language knows how, you, how to interpret your um, your memory, but this here, this malloc, is doing nothing else than taking an amount of bytes and allocating them to you, and it will return, it, it returns the pointer to this memory, right? So, um, here you just write how many bytes you want to have, and the, the way you will usually do this is you ask the programming language, how many bytes is in one float, yeah, because we want to um, allocate it for floats, and then you multiply this with the number of floats that you want to have. So, and in, in, in so this, this is plain C, yeah? In CUDA, uh, you, do it, you do it the same, the same way, it's just a different function, um, it's not exactly the same way. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little bit more modern. Yeah. <coughs> so you have the function CUDA, CUDA malloc that allocates memory now on the device. So we need to give them the pointer for the device, and here again, just the amount of memory. Yeah. Is um, so you you don't need to write this here if you know how many bytes are in a float there will be uh, four bytes in a float. Yeah? You can just write here four. Yeah? It's just bad, bad style. Yeah? Um, so, okay, uh, one disadvantage of this usually is the amount of memory that you need, because in particular, if you do big stuff, which you do when you do machine learning, then you usually have two copies of this, yeah, one of your, um, your 
host machine and one of the device. Yeah, so it's not you you cannot think it's it's not like you have twice the memory. Actually, you have only because you have this memory on the device and this memory in in your host. Uh, you need it twice. I mean, you can be clever and delete stuff. Yeah, but in general, you need it twice. So. Um, I guess I've said this. Uh, yeah, so there's mem copy here, this destination source, destination source, and you have to remember that you use this two different keywords. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so then remember you are responsible for. <coughs> I mean, we are doing C, yeah, C style, yeah? So you are responsible for managing your memory yourself. And whatever you allocate it, you have to free later. If you don't free your memory, then, you're, then nothing happens. The first time, some, um, after some time, your, your operating system will run out of memory and you will be confused. Why this happens? Yeah? So. Okay, so after you have done with, um, with your work, you do, uh, you free your memory um, on the host, obviously, you do it completely C style, and then there is the, the same function for the de device, which is just CUDA free. Yes, so, and again, so if you, if somebody is talking of, of a memory leak, what they mean is that somebody has forgotten to call free. Or now in C++, it would mean um, uh, somebody forgot to call the con destructor. But the destructor, what the destructor does is, is just, you know, behind the scenes, we'll is using this, this malloc and free. This is just something that has become a little bit out of fashion for some time. Now, since more people are using CUDA, you have to go back to the roots and use and have to learn a little bit of basic old C style, yeah? because this is C and not C++. <clears throat> OK, um, CUDA have, uh, So, CUDA functions. So there are different, um, there are different CUDA, different types of CUDA functions. More than two, but we'll discuss only two here. Um, the, the CUDA global function and the CUDA device function. The uh, both both functions are functions that will only be executed on the GPU, and honestly, I find it a little bit um, um, confusing. There's also um, a host device function that you can execute on the, on the CPU and on the, on the GPU. So this is something they invented a little bit later on request, apparently, yeah, because people didn't want to write their function twice only because they want to call it from the CPU and want to call it from the, from the GPU. Um, yeah, but the, the important stuff here is, so the one that you will always need is the global function. And I said this is, this is a little bit confusing because global here means this is the, um, this is the kernel that will only run on the, on the GPU, they call it global because it can be called from the host. And maybe if they reinvented their programming language now, they would pro probably have called it a little bit different. But you always get stuck with what you introduced, right? Um, so this is, this is your kernel. Global means not it runs on both devices, but it is it can be accessed from the host. 
So you call, um, this, this will, for example, be this add function on where you add two vectors. The other thing is the device function. And the device function is a function that is, can only be called from the GPU. This means <coughs> a global function can call a device function. But you cannot just, from your main, um, from your main you cannot call a device function. So a device function is meant to um, encapsulate Um, repeated tasks that you want to do entirely on, on, the, on the GPU. Like for example here you want to calculate the square root. Yeah? So here, big difference is so this here will be called with many threads. This here will be called for one thread. Yeah? So now suppose you have a big equation in your, um, in your global function, where you have to calculate many square roots, yeah? so you don't want to do this again and again. I mean, it's a little bit stupid because there is already a square root function, but just uh, to keep things simple, yeah? S say you have a special square root that is so much faster or whatever. Yeah? So then you want to do this by, by these function calls. Yes, but this will be called only um, for each, each entry individually. Questions to this, to device and... Yes. I have a question. Just, if I understood right, um, and could I what does it... Um, yeah, it, it computes everything in, in each of the memory that the, the, that the GPU has. It is in the memory that the GPU has, yeah. And we make it faster because somehow by playing with the threads. So more threads, we're going to have more memory and then we can... Uh, uh, more memory. Uh, no, the, the thing is, I, I'm not sure that I probably... Okay, I... You know, I, I just remember I skipped over something here that, that may be important, yeah? Um, I mean, I said there are many, there are many cores in a, in a CPU, but you have to, uh, in a GPU, but you have to really imagine there are really many cores, yeah? For example, in the CPUs that we have here, we have 10 cores, yeah? And there, there may be... Um, um, in this AMD <coughs> processors, there are 96 cores. <coughs> so you would usually say 96 cores is a lot of cores for, for a computer. But this is not, this is not to compare um, with a GPU. So the GPU, so the eight-year-old GPUs in, in Phoenix, they have 3,584 um, cores. That, that means they can execute 3,584 threads completely, physically, at the same time. Yeah? So, and what, what is nowadays, or maybe, okay, two years ago or so, used for machine learning has almost 17,000 cores. So they do... 70,000 threads, so you multiply um, two vectors with 17,000 entries, you do this in one clock cycle. Yeah? That, this is, that, 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 that's the point. Okay. The clock cycles are different, are they? Uh, the clock cycles are different, yes. So you do it in one clock cycle of the, of the um, GPU. <coughs> they, they are independent. They may also be the same. Yeah? They have their own clock. Um, okay, now we want to talk about the identification of where we are. Or um, in the so what, what, what is the work 
which thread are we, say, yeah? So, because we call, we call the device function, sorry, not the device function, the, the EC is the global function, yeah? Um, say, add, and we, we call this um, with these additional parameters that we put in these triple chevrons, yeah? So we have this triple chevron, and then we have here two more parameters. Yeah, so the so outside here, this is just a function, and <coughs> the second thing is the number of blocks that we put into one grid. So the grid is the entire is the entire thing, and say how many blocks do we have here? And in this case, we would have one block in in our grid, and the second number is how many threads do we have in one block? Okay, so this is some, some kind of a how they organize things. So what you, <coughs> um, yeah, so what's, um, what you have to remember is that all these threads are called um, with the same arguments. So they, they receive here the same, the same arguments. And CUDA has to provide functionality that allows each thread to identify what it is supposed to do with the data. But they all have access to the same data. Now, the thing with this, um, with this here. So there will be, in total, in this call, <coughs> will be 256 threads, which for GPU is ridiculous because the GPU has thousands of cores, so when we call it this way, this can all be done in one clock cycle, as yeah, so all in complete parallel, yeah? Because it's only, there, there will only be 256 threads. I mean, the function will of course have several clock cycles if they do complicated stuff, all right? So, um, now you can decide yourself whether you want to have more blocks. So, for example, you could have 256 blocks with one thread each, which may not be the best idea because uh, you, you're wasting um, capacity in your, in your multiprocessors. Um, or you could have many threads in one block. So my, my first intuition um, would actually have been, yeah, you want to do the stuff in parallel, so you will put everything into, into the threads in one block, so you have only one block and many threads. But this is not actually the, the way it works, because the number of threads inside a block is limited to 1,024. I mean, this has to do with the hardware, yeah? Um, so these are things that are processed together and they, they can have only 1,024. They can be arranged in one-dimensional or three-dimensional, but if you arrange them three-dimensional, <coughs> then the set dimension is also limited to just 64. So this is not enough for machine learning to have 1,024 threads. So fortunately, you can have a lot of blocks in, in your grid. Yeah, you ha can have two, two by the power of 31 um, blocks in one grid. By the way, what, what, is, what is two by the power of 31? Can you, can you calculate this without, without taking your calculator? Hmm? No, that, okay, you don't, you don't have to be very accurate. So, a guess. You know how to, how to do this. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you it will be, um, it will be two billion. 
So how do I know that it's two billion? Because I typed it into the calculator, of course, to make sure that I'm not saying nonsense, yeah? Yeah, but okay, I'll, I'll admit, I'll check, I sometimes check what I say, not always. <laughs> but <coughs> no, but you, you, can, you can easily do this because two by the, what is two by the power of 10? I mean, this, this is here. 2 by the power of 10 is 1,024. Right? So you could say 2 by the 10 is roughly 1,000. Then 2 by the 20 is um, a million. And 2 by the, by the 30 is a billion. And then 2 by the 2 is, uh, 2 by the 1 is 2, so it's 2 billion. Yeah? Sure. Yeah? So this is so when you when you see something two by the yeah, so you can get get <coughs> you can easily calculate what roughly it is. Yeah? So we have two two billion of these, but in each direction we have only sixty five thousand <coughs> maximum. So we have to split so if you have if you have more than that, you have to split them. Um, up, you cannot use a one-dimensional, you have to split them up in two or three dimensions. Uh, we'll see, we see how this works in, in just a second. So, um, now, locating your job. Yeah? Okay, you call your function and then you have, you have these, these things here that your um, function knows, namely the block, um, the block index and as I said, they are multidimensional, so they have x, y, z. Yeah. So you have to ask. So if you, in in the case that that we had here, we will give only one dimension. They will all be in the x dimension. Yeah. So this is why we have to call. We have to ask block index x times the block dimension. In that case, the block dimension would be one. The block index would be zero in this in this case, and then we have a thread index which also is x, y, z. So we'll um, call this here in x. So now, the way the way this would work, for example, when we have eight blocks in in our grid with two threads each, the identification um, block dimensions. Uh, block. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I, I just, I'll just look whether I, whether I uh, screwed this here up because we'll have, we'll in this. I, I think I, I screwed this up again, right? We are in. In block. Okay. We have eight blocks and we have. Two threads each. I guess I'll have. Is this a picture? No. Okay. Sorry for messing. Okay, so now we'll put. Um, we have eight blocks. So now we have, we have these two arrays here next next to each other, and we want to see to identify where we are. And thread ID is then one. Okay, I'll, I hope I, I did not mess this any further. Yeah. So, okay, you have um, now now the, the way we identify this is we are in in the block number 
number two, and we have the in okay. We are in block block two, and we have the thread number one there. Sorry for sorry for my confusion. So we see we identify as we are in block. No, we are in block. Sorry, block block index. Yeah, block index. Right. So block index is two yeah, because we are counting here the blocks up, and um, our thread index is one. So we'll do this calculation: block index x times the block dimension. Two times eight. I'm messing it up, right? I'm messing it up. Um, so sorry for, you know, the the good thing, it's all on YouTube, so you can always play. <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm not I'm not the, I'm not cutting these things out. I mean this is this is real, this is reality. Let's let's let help me. Okay, guys, this is an exercise. Hell, hell, yeah. You you have a, you have a stupid <coughs> professor is actually sick. Comes here anyway and is messing up with the with the indexes. So how is it how is it correctly? Yeah, give me give me a hand. So we'll have a block. Um, Index. So this this block index goes from the pl yeah. So this wait I but this is the this is the way how we always do it. Block index block ID. This is you know I'm I'm just. Um, yeah, so this this should go from um, from from zero to seven. I think it is. Uh, it is the other. Uh, the color scheme is here so maybe the block index should be a present with ten. Yes. You are completely right. Just that. All my notes say the opposite. <laughs> um, thread index, block index. You know, yeah, so because because it should be so. This this reads like. Um, block index. So we'll have. Because it, it, it won't it won't work this way, right? So if, if the block the block dimension ah wait the block dimension is two because the block has only two threads. The so it's. It's two times Oh my god. <laughs> so we have block. Each block has uh, no we have a crit. Yeah, so we have a crit. Right. So in in this crit wait, so in this in this crit we have we have eight we, we would have eight blocks, right? Mm -hmm. So then the blocks count from from zero to seven, and then we have two threads in each block. I have to admit, so this this kind of thing this 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 confused me when I when I was preparing this and and. Um, um, so usually, usually you set these things up in your in your code once, and then you never think about them again, right? And um, and this is this is usually the way I 
I'm now, I'm actually pretty sure that this is the way we usually write this. So this is because my feeling would be to, to change this, but they have been kind of, um, kind of confusing. So because then this year would be um, when, this is, when this is two and this year counts to seven. So this, then this would be number two times two. This doesn't doesn't work that way, yeah. I have a question. What what I don't understand is which number. For example, if we're at the first one, if we're at the first block. Yeah. Inside we have two threads. So I is going to or the first thread is going to have zero, and the second thread is going to be one, right? Mm -hmm. Then if we move to the next block, we would need to skip the whole... I, I don't know if we need to skip the whole indices or... or yeah, so if you... Right, so... Um, so this is, this is why I say the block dim x must be the number of The number of um, so because that then this has been this would be two and if it's two times so this would be four plus one and if it's four plus one then it's five this doesn't make s so then it it will be in a different spot right so it will be in that spot here I don't know I guess I guess I have to reduce okay. I have to um, do we want do we want to do it online? I, so this would be then two, I guess. So it will just identify another one, and this will be zip this one here, and we put this to. You see, I don't know whether you wrote this in, in, your, in your thing here, so the professor is making too many mistakes. So then this would be two times, two times, no, it would be then this, um, oh my God! I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm. I guess it's right, or I would think that it's right. Because yeah. If we're at the first one. Uh, so we let me see. When, when we, when we do, when we do it this way. Then, if it's block dimensions, it's eight. So what will not will not show up. I mean, you, the, the thing, you know, w the, the, the one thing that is important that comes out is, of course, that everybody gets, gets to do their own thing. Yeah? So this is, this is the important thing. So um, if we have then, so this, this would work with two times, so yeah, so this this way it. In, in that case, it would be like third ID, something like that. Yeah, so in this in this case, this would again be one. So the way the way I had it before. Oops, the way I had it before. Plus plus. Plus two. You think it was correct before? <laughs> okay. So what exactly are the threads? So um, well, no, they, we have two threads in a block. Okay, you know what? I will. 
I will um, discuss this with my specialist on, on these things and, and or, or Konstantin, Konstantin does some research on, on what, what the block um, what the block index is, and we'll, we'll, this, we'll um, try this out in the exercise that's, that is coming, and then when I figured, when we figured this out, I will, I will update the, the slides. And now, if you watch this on YouTube, you, are, you have bad luck, yeah, because you're stuck with the, with the old version. Yeah, so I hope then, uh, okay, maybe, maybe I have to update update this year, this year too. Um, uh, right, so I, what, what I wanted to, um, to show here is you get, you, you can call these things also with three-dimensional crits and blocks, and um, this is when you use the data type, the CUDA data type, um, DIM3. <coughs> <laughs> so you can produce um, a vector, um, no, a triplet, say, that's not a vector, a triplet of with three entries, um, and then you can call your function with these, and then you have to identify the x, y, and z um, component like this, yeah, so x times block uh, dim x plus thread id x. Yeah, so this is. No, please. I, I found, uh, yeah. You yeah. found the explanation. And not the explanation, but I might see how it works. And this is the right way to, or say how it is. Yeah. Right so, I mean, this is the same. Yeah, I, I saw. The, so, we always write it this way. Yeah, it's just. Um, you know, the, the problem is if you write things always the same way and then you have to explain them why you write it this way. And I think that, I, I would think that the tricky part because somehow is the dimension of the x. Probably yeah. if we call block in uh, dimension x, we're not going to get 8. But, but the two. dimension, the complete dim dimension, because I would think that uh, you would need to skip all the what I don't understand is the i. I wouldn't suppose that it goes 0, 1, and then it would need to skip, I don't know, 256 times close, and then it would be 2. Yeah, so this is, this is why maybe, maybe before I think it, it, when, when the threads. Um, okay. So this, this is the way these these programs are usually are usually written. Yeah. So um, so apparently, block dim is then the number of um, okay. You know what? I'll. I'll, I'll look it up later while you're doing while you're doing your um, your exercise and and but you you can do it this way because this is the way we usually do it yeah so this is this should be the the, the correct way uh, yeah sorry for sorry for confusion <laughs> um, that's reality yeah so always always remember the guy in front of you. Is also not. I mean, also learns these things from from somewhere. Um, okay. Calling device function. Yes. So this, I guess, I've already said. So this device, the device function, can now be called inside, inside the um, from from a global function and not from outside. So in the global function, for example, we want to have the square root over, over everything. So here again, we have to um, get the, the index in this way, and then we'll um, call the 
function um, square, which is a device function um, which is a device function and will return the square root simply. So this is not a big deal. Now, one of the last things we have to talk about is the, is the warps. Now, warps is somewhere the like a little bit the hardware implementation of, of these things. So because they are SIMD machines, yeah, they cannot execute these threads um, sim at the same time. Yeah? We say we have thousands of thousands of cores, but these cores cannot do independent work. Yeah? What, so, but they have, to, they have to do work together. However, they do not need, they don't all need to do the same thing at the same time. And they will not do the same thing at the same time. Um, only 32 so these, the, the length of the vector is, is 32. So they will do 32 of these operations always at the same time. And this is called a warp. And sometimes it's possible to split a warp so that it's only doing half of this. Then it's a half warp. warp. Yeah. <clears throat> and, but um, usually you have, to, you have to split these. These things are in the hardware split up in warps of of 32. So this is the length of, of the vector of your SIMD device. And now, um, if you know this, then you also um, know from, um, from last time, if we want to do branching on a SIMD machine, where it's not, where this is actually not possible, and we had this, this program, which was relatively complicated, where we simulated branching. Right? So we do both operations, save them in different places, and then combine them together. Yeah? Compare them and um, combine them together. <coughs> so all of this is, in, is also done in CUDA. The only thing is you don't need to care about it. Yeah? So the good thing here is you can just write the code. Yeah? But you have to know how your code is executed. So here, Again, um, in each branch, always everything is executed. Like, for example, or at least if it actually branches. So I'm, I'm not sure um, when, when one branch doesn't do anything because there is no th thread in this branch, probably it will not be executed. I don't know. But um, let's think about the, the case like this. So we have. Um, we have our warp here of this at 32 um, different threads. And then in this, in this global function, we have, we have a condition which is totally fine to write in, in CUDA. Yeah? If I is equal to zero, do the zero thing and else do the other thing. So we have some branching. And the, the way this is executed is, so at, at zero, it will do the zero thing and will turn the other threads off. So one possibility that they have is to just mute yeah, the operation. They can mute it, so it will not do anything. But it will also not do anything else, right? So then this will be executed, and then the opposite part will also be executed, where this one here is muted. Yeah? And then after executing both, everything is done. But you have to, so you don't want to do a lot of branching. And also, <clears throat> if you, um, you don't want to have anything that, both, that you want to do in both branches um, inside, inside the branch here. So you will want to 
minimalize the branching as much as possible. Yeah? Because each branch is executed, it is always executed sequentially. So it's parallel programming means sequential execu execution of branches, right? So this um, brings, ah, no, this, this was only the second to last thing. And, um, okay, so there is some simplification. Um, for the management of the memory. <coughs> I'm running out of voice, um, but we'll be done in, in a few minutes. So since release 6 of CUDA, I think we are in 11 or 12 now. There is a simplification for the management of allocated memory. So previously, um, I, I told you we have to allocate memory on the host and the device. Then it's also cool because we have uh, complete control and we do not need to keep the one if we don't need it anymore on the on, on one side um, but usually it means that we have to keep it on that we have to manage these things on both sides uh, ourselves and here um, comes this CUDA malloc managed that will behind the scene produce a copy of this array on the host and on the device and we can use a single pointer to address both. Yeah? And it will always decide, so that the programming language will decide which one we are talking about and it will manage these things. So if you... Um, so it will take care that the one is copied uh, so when I mean, you do something on the GPU and then you access it on the, G on the CPU and then it will do the copying itself which is a good thing and a bad thing because you have to remember it does the copying automatically without you necessarily knowing that it's, does the, that it's doing the copying and the copying is the, extent, is the very expensive part yeah? So um, this, is, this is always this two-edged sword. Yeah? <coughs> you get the simplicity, but you also lose control because it's already managed. So, okay, you can, you can, act, you can generate it like this and then you have to free this <coughs> again. Then this is called um, unified shared memory. And here is here's a difference um, in how this this would would look like. So you have um, say you have this global times two function and you want to access this with CUDA malloc managed and and um, in the uh, few back compatible devices that are so old that they r don't run um, CUDA 6 or later then here what you have to do is you do the CUDA allocation on the device, the FC allocation on the host, then you fill this, you copy it, you copy it to the device, then you do stuff and then you have to, um, then you have to free both of them. And if you do this CUDA malloc managed, then you can actually write into this array on the host and then just do the calculation and do something with it and then free both of them. So, of course, now you fill it and then you execute something, then you call in um, this kernel. So what you don't see in between here, in between here it will copy it. Yeah? Without telling you that it does. But this is the expensive stuff, so it's still happening. Okay, so <clears throat> we are coming close, closer to, um, to the end. I've taken up a little bit more time than I wanted because I also wanted to look into the code, but uh, let's briefly talk about the infrastructure that we need. So, in our program, we have to include the CUDA runtime lab, um, header yeah, in order to, to run the thing. 
And then in our main function, we can, we do not need, we can use the CUDA set device to zero, so zero is the default. So, um, um, so machines like also Phoenix, they will have in one compute node, they, have, will, have, they will have several um, <coughs> graphics cards, GPUs, yeah? And you have to specify on what graphics card you want to run it. So your first graphic card, if you have only one, then this, this one has the device number zero, and if you do not specify one, it will take that one. If you want to choose it, then you have to specify, and then you can here write one, two, three, yeah? How many you, you have. So the next thing is you cannot compile this with the usual C or, or, or GNU compiler, but you'll have to run the NVIDIA um, C, um, C compiler. So um, remember, this is a C compiler. Yeah? It's not necessarily completely compatible with C++. Yeah? So it may include some things of C++, but not necessarily all. Um, so this is NV. CC, and then the, the rest is as usual. The CUDA file has the extension CU. Yeah? And then, then you can, in principle, just start it. So, problem is, I mean, we should not start things on the um, login nodes anyway. Yeah? The login nodes are not for, compute, for computing, and because they are not for computing, they do not have a GPU. So, what we have, so we have to do it with the, with the job file now, otherwise it won't run. And in the job file, in, in Phoenix, we have to um, indicate that we use the QGPU03. Um, otherwise, it won't um, work. And with that, let me um, go to let me go to the code to give us a little bit um, blah 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 make file so we let me see bin Laplace okay so in um, in our Laplace example your homework there is a CUDA version no this is this is the executable this is not the code um, Laplace bin, no, it's SRC, so here, SRC. Oh, where did I? Okay, it's down here, I don't know why it's in, okay. Main CUDA, main, main, main CUDA, right, so, okay. So here, this this is one. This is now the one example um, that we look into before we before we do come to the exercise. So in here, I mean, hopefully you already looked into your homework, so you know what what, what is supposed to do. Yeah, this is the seed example, and here it it uses the CUDA helper. And then up here it defines, um, <coughs> it declares this global void. So this is the kernel function. CUDA calculate time step. And here it gets the entire arrays, inner grid, outer grid, and so on. Now, you see, I mean, this is, this runs. Yeah, so I guess this is, this is the correct way of writing it. So it calculates. It is using one dimension here only, even though there's a two-dimensional, um, it's a two-dimensional problem. But we already have put this into with the mapper into a one-dimensional format, right? You could do it in another way, but this is the way it's solved here. So we'll we'll calculate the index from the block ID x and the block times block ID x. Block dim x time sorry if I block dimension plus uh, times the block index and then the thread index x so 
this is this is how it how it's calculated. Yeah, and sorry for for my confusion. <coughs> I'll try to co um, correct the picture. Then you do the very normal calculation in here, right? So it's not nothing nothing fancy. It's just the same the same calculation as always. So now in this um, um, here there is a set device uh, function. So the set device function is not a CUDA function. The set device function is uh, defined in in one of the headers. So we'll have a he CUDA helper. Yeah. So where there are some help where there are some help functions. Now you see where is this? This is uh, a river in Kyoto. Yeah, so very. Um, sorry, yeah, set device. Yeah, so what the set device function is, so you can, you can specify on what device you want to run it, and what it's actually calling here is the CUDA set device function with some, with some tests if there is no device, that number of device, blah, yeah. So you can, you can specify these devices. Uh, let me go back. Okay, so this is a function that is implemented here. We don't we don't actually need to specify the device function if we don't uh, the, um, the the device if we don't specify it, then it will automatically start at device zero. But maybe you want to use several um, devices at the same time. Then of course you have to specify. Okay, so then the usual the usual stuff here. What they are doing, we have I think CUDA 11 installed here, so it's possible to um, use CUDA malloc managed. Yeah, so we have the old and the new data on the device and the um, and the hosts at the same time. Of course, we have the entire grid size number the size um, size of double then there's a CUDA error which we are going to skip boundary conditions are, set, are being set and somewhere we call the function where's the where do we call the function return zero uh, here, right. So calculate time step. Yeah. So we have number of blocks and block size. So block size is what I said. The um, the number of threads in one block, right? So and these things are set here. Block size is set to. Two hundred fifty-six. So th there should be something that you can divide by thirty-two, so that it fits into a uh, wall. Yeah, and the number of blocks will get. Um, so we we want to process each node, each point in in this grid with just one thread. So we need the number of blocks for this. Will um, so we calculate what is happening. So we calculate uh, how many how many points do we have in our array anyway, and divide this by the block size, right? So and then we we know how many blocks we need in order to do this. And remember, the number of threads within one block is limited to one thousand twenty four, but the number. Um, But the number of um, the number of blocks <coughs> the number of, of blocks is, is much is much 
the potential number of blocks is much larger. What, what did I do? do, do. Sorry. Okay, I guess I will now stop. Okay, now we can execute this and we see it's run, it, it runs faster. Unfortunately, I have this, this connection problem. I think I'll, I'll stop the recording in this, in this here, in this place.